So you're new to the whole freshly milling your grains, um, maybe even new to stocking up on grains, everything dealing with real whole grains, and now you are slightly overwhelmed because you've been searching on YouTube and now you, right now, you can't even, it's difficult to find grains. <laughs> so it can be a bit overwhelming. If you are a newbie, a beginner to milling your own wheat, baking your own bread, storing your grains, then stay tuned because this video is for you. Hey everyone, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia, and if you are new here, as many, many of you are right now, um, welcome. Right now, it is April of 2022, and um, once again, just like back in about spring of 2020, um, we have had a huge surge of the interest of milling your own grains, storing grains, all the things with grains. Right now, we are once again having problems. Well, right now we're having problems finding um, grains that everyone is wanting, um, where grain mills and things like that, you're, you're at least able to get those, those are in stock. But we're having problems with the wheat part, but a huge interest has come about from this, about milling your own wheat, baking your own bread from home, and everything going with that. And so um, I recently did a poll on my channel all about where many of y'all were in the process and most of y'all are beginners. And so this video is gonna be for the beginners, for the newbies. We're gonna be getting back to the basics, y'all. It can get so overwhelming and so confusing when you find out that there's more than one type of flour, <laughs> when there's more than one type of wheat that you can be handling. And then you start getting on Pinterest and YouTube and you start seeing things like sourdough and um, you know rye breads and pumpernickels and you, then you have muffins and you have pancakes and you know yeast breads and biscuits and all of these things. And where do you start? What do you need? We're gonna be addressing all those today. In this video, we're gonna be getting back to those basics. I'm gonna be walking you through, simplifying it down to what you need bare bones to get started, what is what are um, necessities, what are the nice to haves. Um, so especially right now when you know getting everything is a bit more difficult to get your hands on, or you maybe just don't have the budget to go out and buy everything under the sun. Um, we're going to be discussing that for you of where you can get started. So basic number one, you now want to mill your own wheat to make your own grains. Well, you need a grain mill. Now this can be a manual grain mill or it can be an electric grain mill. And then in the electric grain mills, we have the impact mill or the stone mill. And this alone, choosing a grain mill can be crazy overwhelming and because it is a larger purchase, especially for your electric mills. I mean, you're looking at anywhere from three to $500 investment of a grain mill. So I totally understand why this is a bit of a large decision that you're wanting to take your time on. Now, I did do a video all about choosing a grain mill. Um, I will link everything like that down below. Um, so it's gonna be walking you through the different types of grain mills that are out there. And then the questions that you need to ask yourself, which one is best for your needs? Um, so you'll be able to make that decision a little bit easier. For those who do not know, I my first grain mill was a Wonder Mill. She was an impact mill, Miss Wanda Wonder Mill, and she's been wonderful this whole time. Um, but I have recently gotten in the past year a stone grind mill as well. I actually have the Nutri-Mill Harvest, which her name is Nancy, in case you did not know that. <laughs> she has been named. Um, so those are the two grain mills that I have. I've also done a review of an actual cheaper, like $50 hand manual mill that you know it did the job well it definitely takes longer doing it by hand but it did did it well and i'll link that review down below bottom line with the grain mills if you were looking at the mock mill the nutrimill harvest nutrimill classic the wonder mill or the como mill electric grain mills those are the most common ones and really you're not going to go wrong with any of those they are all really great grain mills that are going to get you the nice flour that you need to bake your bread. So, but again, watch that video about choosing a grain mill to determine which one might suit you better. 
Now, for those of you who do not have a budget for a grain mill right now, but you may have something like a Vitamix blender, a really powerful blender, you can start to grind your grains with that. It will get you flour. Trust me, I've done that by accident. It will mill it into flour, but you can only do about a half a cup to a cup at a time because it needs to be very quick because a Vitamix, a blender, will really cook your grains where it's going to start cooking those nutrients out. Um, so if you have a blender, a powerful enough blender, you can start there, but it's going to take you longer and you just have to watch the heat of the grain. So I do highly recommend that you do invest in a good um, grain mill. Definitely um, save, up, save up your money for that, but you can start with a blender right now. Now, second thing, back to the basics. You have your grain mill. You have a way of getting those wheat berries into flour. That's that's what you're going for, y'all. And remember, people have done this for thousands of years. They've done it with, like, I mean, rocks, stones. You know, it can be done. <laughs> so once you have figured out however you're going to be getting the wheat berries converted into flour, now you actually need to decide, well, what ba what wheat berries should you get? Oh, heavens, especially now. Okay, so I also did a video about this, about what wheat berries do what. Which wheat berries should I be getting? Um, I will link that video down below as well if you have not watched it. And I go through the most common wheat berries and grains and what they're best for. But bottom line, back to the basics. All you need, okay, all you need, basics, is you need a hard wheat for your yeast spreads. This can be hard red or hard white. It doesn't matter if it is spring or winter wheat. Don't worry about that right now, people. Don't worry about that. These are the basic things. You need a hard wheat, a hard red or hard right white. Right now, hard white is very difficult to get your hands on. So get you a hard red. It works just fine for your yeast spreads. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Just get you a hard, ye a hard wheat for your yeast spreads and then a soft white wheat for your baked goods. Now, um, because again, the hard wheats have a higher protein, meaning they'll, they'll have a higher gluten content to develop the, ye um, the gluten and the yeast for the bread to rise. A soft white wheat is not going to do yeast spreads. It doesn't have enough protein or the gluten content to make your high yeast spreads, but they're perfect for your baked goods, your cookies, your um, cakes, um, definitely you want it for your biscuits, um, things like that. Now I have been asked right now in this crazy time, does hard white wheat work for um, like your cookies and baked goods and things like that? Mm, I, you can definitely use them for, you use it for muffins. I personally have never used it for cookies. So the, that's a little bit of a risk, but generally speaking, soft, a w soft white wheat for your baked goods and a hard wheat for your yeast spreads. Do not worry about the ancient grains right now. Don't worry about all the fancy things. Focus on these. Back to the basics. Just basics. You need a grain mill, you need a hard wheat, and you need a soft white wheat, and you're going to be set to go. The third big thing of getting back to the basics is grab you one recipe and master it. This is the recipe to rule them all. <laughs> you one good bread recipe will get you your yeast spreads and i have one that i list that i will link below my simple yeast bread recipe i get very tall large two pound loaves with these i get very tall large two pound loaves with these recipes um with my bread recipe and it's pretty easy it has no extra additives like the lecithin or the vital wheat gluten it is just your flour your salt your water your yeast your honey and your oil, <laughs> and that's it. Um, so it's pretty easy to make great loaves. Many testimonies of y'all making these loaves, but with that one recipe, I can make rolls, I can make hamburger buns, I even use it for my pizza. So get you the one recipe and master it. Don't worry about your artisan breads. Your, don't even worry about your sourdough right now unless you are already extremely experienced in sourdough. Just do a very basic loaf bread and use that also for your rolls and your hamburger buns and your pizza crust. Just go with that right now, y'all. No need to complicate this. One recipe, master it, and it'll rule them all. And then we can get into the whole fancy pizza crust and you know all the things later on. But this is back to the basics, what you start with. And again, that recipe and video will be linked below. Oh, those are the three basics that if you just wanna start, you're starting out 
what to focus on gets you a way to mill those grains, whether it be an electric or a hand mill, get you a hard wheat and a soft wheat. So that covers your yeast spreads and your, um, your baked goods, and then get you one bread recipe to master. Now I also have recipes from muffins, cornbread, and pancakes. Those are quick bread recipes, and those are super easy to do. So if you're intimidated by the yeast bread recipe, but you really want to start milling your own wheat, okay, do pancakes, muffins, there you go. Um, and I'll link those videos as well. I also have a biscuit recipe. Cornbread is also very easy. So those are quick, easy recipes that you can do. All right. So those are the three things y'all. That's it. That's it. That's all you need to get started. Again, I know we can be so distracted by Pinterest and all the fancy things. Now, some nice to have things is you see me in my videos with my recipes where I have my Bosch Universal Mixer, which is an amazing mixer. And you do need a more heavy duty mixer like the Bosch Universal Mixer or even the Anarskum and Ankarsum and um, the Ankar, I'll link that one though. There's another heavy duty really good mixer that's actually made in Sweden. Um, and those are the two main mixers that people swear by for handling the type of dough, the heavier dough that we're dealing with. But you do not need the fancy mixers. You don't even need a KitchenAid to get started. You can knead everything and mix everything by hand. And I did a video about that as well as how to knead by hand if that is what you're having to look at right now. Don't worry about getting the really fancy machines. You can do this. People have been doing it for thousands of years without their fancy machines and even cooking this over a fire, y'all. Okay, we now have temperature controlled ovens. Thank the Lord. But those are the nice to have some mixers. Don't, don't worry right now. If you don't have that, you can bake bread just fine without it. And I did a video to help you out below. Now, other things to consider when starting out is first of all, subscribing to this channel. <laughs> because I am all about um, real whole grains from a biblical perspective and I teach you what to do with them, how to store them, why you need them, all about using freshly milled wheat. You will not see any all-purpose flour, store-bought flour, fake bread here, y'all. We are all about the real deal, the real whole grains. So definitely subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you are wanting more, we also have a membership group for the elite supporters out there. I will link that below as well. And with that, you get exclusive content of a, you get a weekly podcast that is only for the elite supporters that kind of goes even more behind the scenes, tips and tricks, encouragements, basically whatever pops in my head for that week. Um, you also get a weekly recipe sent right to your email inbox. So even whenever I do videos like this one that has no recipes, you're at least getting a recipe every single week that's going to help you um, build up that portfolio of yours. Also follow me on Instagram at grains and grit. Instagram is where I really post things more in the moment. Um, so when I hear of quick sales or if I find some wheat berries or things like that, I generally post it on Instagram. So be sure to follow me there as well. And of course, I do have some freebies for you guys. We got a free grains calculator for those of you who want to know how much wheat that you're needing to buy for your family for however long. You just sign it for my newsletter and that comes to you absolutely free. And I also have a recipe cheat sheet. So all of those things down in the description box below. So those are the biggest things of just getting back to the basics. It is not complicated. Remember that people have been doing this for thousands of years in very primitive conditions. And in, in many parts of the world, they still are doing some sort of bread over a fire. Some places in India still cook over animal dung. I mean, there are very primitive places that are still cooking with whole grains. And so you can do this too. When I started, I could burn water. Like I could barely cook and then like two a year and a half after i got married and you know coming from burning water i was milling my own wheat and baking bread and look at me now i have a youtube channel teaching you all about how to do it so if i can do it you can do it you can do this let's take a deep breath let's keep calm and bake some bread so hopefully this was helpful to you guys again be sure to subscribe to subscribe and check out the description box below for all the things that i mentioned and as always Comment below if you've got any questions. I love hearing from you guys and I'll see you next week. Bye.